this video, we will show an example of performing a principal component analysis on the famous IRIS dataset. The IRIS dataset contains measurements in centimeters for four variables from three species of iris from a sample of 150 flowers. The data was collected over several years by Edgar Anderson, who used the data to show that measurements could be used to differentiate between different species of irises. A little background about principal component analysis. Principal component analysis, or PCA, aims to identify patterns in data by reducing the dimensionality of multivariate data to a few key explanatory variables called principal components. PCA uses an orthogonal transformation to convert a data set of potentially correlated variables into a set of linearly uncorrelated variables called principal components. These vectors form an uncorrelated orthogonal basis set that retain as much information as possible. When there is a strong correlation between variables, the basis set can be used to reduce the dimensionality of the data by projecting it onto a smaller dimensional subspace. The number of principal components is less than or equal to the number of original variables. The first principal component has the largest possible variance, and each subsequent component has the largest possible variance given it is orthogonal to the preceding components. You can read more about principal component analysis in Maple's help pages. Now more about our data set. The iris data set contains measurements in centimeters for the variables sepal length, sepal width, petal length, and petal width for 150 flowers from three species of iris. The iris data set is available in Maple's datasets folder and can be imported using the import command. Once we import it, we get a new data frame where we have column headers corresponding to each one of these variables we see here. And importantly, we can notice that each one of the data series that are inside of this data frame, the first four here are of type numeric. So these are all floating point values. But the last column is a column of strings. And this column of strings corresponds to these three levels here. Now for ease of use, I'm going to assign a new variable. I'm going to call this iris labels, and I'm going to uh, assign to it the column labels that we see here from the iris data set. Now the reason I do this is a number of commands from statistics, such as plots and the data summary command, uh, usually require uh, the data to be of type numeric. And if we give it a column of strings, it just won't know how to handle that information. So let's begin, and let's have a look at this data set in a kind of a little bit more of a meaningful way. The statistics data summary command returns more details on each one of these columns. So if we run the data summary command on the first four numeric columns of our data set, supplying this summarize equals embed option, we can now get a breakdown of seven summary statistics. So we can quickly see what the mean is for each one of our variables. As well, there's the standard deviation, skewness, the max and min, and the cumulative weight. And, and what this really is in this case, we don't have any weight assigned to any one of our variables, so this just gives us a tally, it gives us an indication of how many variables or observations we have in our data set. So the data summary is it's good as, at, at giving us a big picture view into our data. Uh, but in, in this case, as we saw before, uh, the fifth column here, the fifth data series, species, does have three distinct levels. So in this case, if we just say that the mean for each one of these items is this value, this, this may not be telling us the whole story. So in this case, we, wanna, we may want to go through and perform some aggregate statistics based on a column. So again, I'm just going to run iris data, I'm just going to echo this back to us. And I'm going to use the aggregate command to perform some aggregate statistics. So let's go down here in our context menu. We're going to go down to quantities and choose to aggregate by column. And we'll choose to aggregate by species. This is where we have three distinct levels. And we can pick our statistic here that we want to use. In this case, I'll just use the mean. And we'll show a tally as well to see how many are in each one of these levels. If I press OK, I now get a report back. And we can see now a breakdown for the mean for each one of our columns. Now you'll notice that these values are different than what we saw before. So the mean we saw before for, say, a sepal length was 5.84. But in this case, we can actually see that 
for each one of these bins, the means differ. So here we have a mean of 5, a mean of 6, a mean of 6.6. .6. We can also observe the tally is equivalence. We have, for them, from 150 observations, we have 50 of each one of these species of flowers. So we'll be showing some more demonstrations in a second of ways we can start to differentiate based on variables such as species. And one of those ways we can do this is by using a command we call grid plot in statistics. And this command is going to let us detect some patterns, to kind of do some exploratory data analysis before we move on to doing the principal component analysis on our data. So running this command, I'm just going to zoom back out now so we can put everything on one screen. This will give us a breakdown of our, our data, column by column, as we compare the data. So in this case, what we're looking at is this is a point plot of sepal length versus sepal width. And what we've done here is we've assigned a color to each one of the levels contained within the species. So you can see that there's kind of some distinct groupings that happen, at least over here when we're discussing sepal length versus petal length. We can see that there's distinct groupings for each one of these different irises. So not only that, we can read a little bit more information from this chart. Uh, we can add things like a correlogram or have an indication of how uh, closely correlated the variables are here. And in the case of sepal length versus sepal width, the, uh, we can see that it's not very correlated. But as we get down to petal length versus petal width, we can almost see that there's kind of more of a linear relationship that's developed between these two with a correlation of 0.96. All right, so let's, let's now talk about the principal component analysis. And in the previous section, we saw that uh, the grid plot could be used to quickly analyze and, and just kind of give us a, a more visual indication if there is some potential patterns occurring. We can also use it to return things like the correlation between variables. And from that we saw that uh, pedal width and pedal length were fairly highly correlated. Uh, but in this section we want to talk about using a PCA. And we're going to talk about running a PCA to determine which of the variables explain the majority of the variability in the data. So to do so, let's just make a new variable. We're going to call this iris PCA, and we're going to run the PCA command from the statistics package on our iris data. And we'll just run this on, as we saw before, we want to just do it on the numeric columns. And we'll add the summarize option in order to get a better picture of what's going on within our PCA. So from this, we can very quickly summarize, and we can see that each one of the PCA components, so the first one, second, third, and fourth in this order, the first one accounts for 92% of our variance. So this is a fairly high value, so we can kind of start to think already that the first component may be enough to describe the overall variability of our data set. Another important aspect of the PCA that we run inside of Maple is it actually returns a record. And this record can be used to interrogate and get these standard values, the proportion of variance, the standard deviation, as well as the rotation matrix and the principal components from the PCA analysis. So, for example, we can now take PCA, the iris PCA, and do this colon dash rotation, and this will return our rotation matrix, or the loadings of the components, to us. So there's a number of things we can do with that record. We can query it in a number of different ways. Now there's a number, a number of different commands you can actually use directly on a record generated by the PCA. And one of those is called Screeplot, and the Screeplot is useful for visualizing the variance explained by each component. So if we run the Screeplot on the PCA results, we can quickly see that here are each one of our components in order. And as we saw before, the first one accounts for 92.46% of our variance, second is only 5%, and we go down from there. This red line here, this is our cumulative proportion of the variance explained. So we're kind of hovering up around 92 to start with, and we're just getting up to 100 by the time we're at number 4. So as we can see, the second component really just is, it accounts for a much smaller fraction of the total variance. And, and this often does suggest that one component may be enough to summarize the variability in the data. Uh, the biplot command is also another way we can show uh, how these show the first two principal components uh, as well as the observations in the same diagram and we can use this to look for things uh, such as if, if two variables are correlated with one another if they can be summarized in one dimension of information 
So let's run this, and we're just going to do by plot again of the of the PCA record. Uh, I'm going to add in the color scheme option, so that way we do get the same breakdown as we saw in the grid plot, where we have kind of a clustered breakdown. And here we get as these are our results from the by plot. We have our clusters here of information. And it's important to note here, so we have on the x-axis, we have our first dimension. This is where we have 92% of our variance explained. Uh, in dimension 2, 5%. Now, it's important to notice we have arrows here, and each one of these very arrows correspond to our variables. So we have here that pedal width and pedal length. They are kind of pointing off in the same direction, and this often will uh, show us that or tell us that there may be some correlation between these variables. Uh, as well, sepal length is pointing off in the same direction too, so there might be a fairly high level of correlation between these. Sepal width, as we saw from, from when we ran the grid plot, is uh, it's not correlated with other variables, but it can still be explained by uh, a fair amount of the single first dimension of information. Another point to take from the by plot here is that you see here each one of these clusters of information. So this is actually the points we have from our original data frame, but it's projected down into this two-dimensional space. So the summary from the by plot is uh, we can observe that pedal width and pedal length are highly correlated and their variability can be primarily attributed to the first component. Uh, likewise, the first component also explains a large part of the sepal length. Uh, however, the variability in sepal width is, is more attributable to the second component. So those are just a few of the ways you can use the PCA command from the statistics package in Maple on a data frame of information. If you'd like to see this example, in Maple's help system, open up the statistics and data analysis section, then under data frames and data series, in the examples folder, you'll find the IRIS dataset example worksheet is located here.